I have no clue what is gonna be in this box. It's like Christmas. Maybe I'll just look at the card and then. Oh my gosh! Yay! Watermelon tourmaline! I love this stuff! I think this is probably gonna be like a round piece. It's gonna be pretty smooth, not gonna be faceted. Forget about what I think. Let's find the. Oh my gosh. Yay! Even better than what I was thinking. This is delicate. I'm gonna be super careful. I love watermelon tourmaline. I'm actually thinking of buying a piece of watermelon tourmaline for myself. Oh my gosh! Oh! I was wondering why you wanted me to wear this. Because I look like a watermelon today. <laughs> Little green and pink. I was thinking it'd be like a slice of this, but we actually have it in the host rock, which is super awesome. Almost looks like there's a little mica in the host rock. I see the tourmaline. Okay, right here, that's like a really good example. You see the green, the pink right there, and then you've got that, it almost looks like the rind of the watermelon. Perfect crystal structure. You see these really cool extraction lines. That's indicative of tourmaline. Look on the back of that. All these different stones, like there's something that reminds me of muscovite. There's something that kind of reminds me of like, I don't know, it's in sheets. Like the color looks like it's a barrel, but I don't think the crystal structure. We'll have to ask Renata. Surprise, Renata's coming back today for the show. What I want to ask her is like, what else is going on? I know for sure this is a watermelon tourmaline, but what is this material right here? Is my speculation correct that there is maybe muscovite or some sort of mica in here? This is classic tourmaline growth right there. You have different chemical impurities that make it green right here and pink right here, and you get the perfect recipe. We've talked about how gemology, it's just like baking a cake. You need the perfect ingredients for the perfect amount of time, perfect heat, and then you get these perfect gemstones. All right, so I've been looking at this specimen. What is that material right there? This, I think, is called Clevelandite, which is okay. like a weird, obscure mineral that you get in pegmatites, which is also where you get tourmalines. If you see, like, the mica that you're talking about that's has sort of a pinkish that's purple tint. That's what I thought, yeah. And that's because it has lithium in it. So this is obviously a tourmaline. It's mm -hmm. a group of minerals, and it is trigonal because of how the atoms are stacked like a puzzle, sort of like Legos, if you will, atomic Legos. Ooh. <laughs> you get sort of an elongated crystal. When we talk about a crystal, we talk about A, B, and C axes. Right. And so the long axis here is called the c-axis right in tourmaline always if you're gonna have a striation it's gonna be along the c-axis so the striation right there that's a growth mark the striations they're like little etch marks and they're in a parallel line you can feel them yep you can feel them they're raised so we've got the mica we have that obscure clevelandite clevelandite that yep. we talked about and we have the watermelon tourmaline yep. tourmaline is not the only mineral that you can have growth marks in diamonds yes trigonal trigons trigons Tri yeah. this is trigonal trigons yeah which look like little triangles they're really exactly cute. so diamonds are cubic that's mm -hmm. their crystal system, and they have little triangles. There's some samples coming. Where are there? What? We should duck. You know what this mineral is. That looks like quartz. It is quartz. Tourmaline is also actually in the same system as quartz. They're both trigonal. Okay, so this is the c-axis again, but notice that in tourmaline, you've got vertical lines running parallel to the c-axis. And these are running mm -hmm. perpendicular. So the long axis in quartz is here, and these go sideways. And these are fantastic diagnostic tools when you're in the field before mm -hmm. a gemstone is cut. So if I pulled this out of the ground, I could look at the growth marks and say like, all right, this is probably Course. Now I'm gonna tell you why with some more rocks. If you look, you see that it's cubic, right? So it's like a perfect right. cube and it's like a mirror face. So this is one habit and not like the bad habit, not the kind you have to kick, not but like far. a kind of shape. And there's one other shape that is more like a garnet. Do you notice this? Yes. Garnet is also cubic. It's like a dodecahedron almost. Yep, that's Except what I was looking for. Except in pyrite, we call it pyridohedron. So why do we care that pyrite forms these two forms? Who cares? The reason is when you combine the forms as they're growing, when they alternate between two different forms, you get one more thing. Oh, okay, growth marks right there. Yeah, growth Those marks. Those are striations. Exactly. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, so why are the striations all going in different directions though? That's right. what's confusing me. Yeah, so that's related to the combination of two forms. And when you combine them together and it's growing, it alternates. So you get a cube shape, oh, okay. but it's basically like the crystal's trying to grow two ways at once. So it's really cool that all these crystal structures and the striations and the growth mark, that's all natural. You know, we didn't do a thing to all these. The only exactly. thing we did was pull it out of the ground. Here is, you can see these growth structures right here. I'm running my finger along them and they're all different directions. Whenever you're in the field, if you're mining for gemstones, these growth marks along with the crystal structure are gonna help you learn all about what you're finding. Exactly. 
Because of its complicated chemical formula, we actually call it the garbage can mineral. Ooh. This particular piece of pyrite comes from a really popular locality in Spain. The matrix, the host rock, is actually really rich in clay. Oftentimes you see little perfect pyrite cubes and they're loose, and that's because the clay is so soft they fall out. Oh, I didn't even see that. Heck, this is awesome. So this is really cool because we talked about the trigon, so you've got that growth pattern. Wow, that is yeah, that is not like a chemical acting on the finished mineral crystal and like etching it away. It's growing. That's like the Whoa. crystal like fighting with each other, battling over what kind of form to make. That is so cool. Mother Nature's not just a chef, she's also a puzzle master. I know. <laughs> I feel like this this thing reminds me of something from Inception. Gem, Gemception. You know, that's actually my least favorite movie. We're gonna take a closer look, so what should we be checking out? We've got a wide variety of minerals here, so I would definitely pay attention to not just the crystal shapes mm -hmm. and their faces, but also the different marks that you see yeah. on each of them, because they're all unique, and that tells you something about each one. Thank you to Renata. I always love having a geologist here on the show. We had a great episode today learning all about the difference of uh, crystal structures and growth marks. Two of my favorite examples were right here, trigons and striations. If you liked what you saw today and you want to see more, like and subscribe and leave your comments below. Thank you. Thank you.